The following podcast is provided by Era Living, innovator in residential retirement options since 1987. Welcome to Answers for Elders Radio Network, and we are back again with Era Living. And we've had such a great time talking to the various staff members in the various communities, but this time we're here for a special treat and because we are going to be speaking with a lady by the name of Peg Hall and Peg is a resident at Air Living at Aljoya Thornton Place. And that's up by Northgate in North Seattle, Washington. Peg, thank you so much for being on the show today. You're welcome. Peg, you have a very interesting background. And before we get into your life at Air Living, could you give us a little bit of information about your background? Because I love the story that you shared with me. Well, I'm from the East Coast, uh, grew up in New Jersey. Uh huh. After I was married, left the East Coast, went to various other cities. My husband was an Air Force officer. We uh-huh. went to Japan. And while we were in Japan, we had our first child. And then when we came back, we seemed to migrate to the West Coast, Yeah, uh, raised our family in California and continued north and now in Seattle. And you got to Seattle and you stayed here. Yes, because the son I have living in Seattle was very persuasive. (laughs) Well, there you are. Well, we're glad you're still here. And you obviously moved into Aljoya a little bit of a story because you had started on... Uh, because you needed a higher degree of care, but your quality of life got better and now you're more independent. And I would love to learn a little bit about the story of your experience with Air Living. Well, when I first moved into Aljoya, Uh I was independent. I wasn't meeting many people because the pandemic was going on. Right. And uh, I I joke about how I used to go to the trash room to meet the other residents. (laughs) We didn't have activities or meals together, but it was 2020. What could you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And after I was here three months, we would go outside and get some exercise, Uh taking a walk and unexpectedly got some vertigo, crashed to the ground (sighs) and had a severe break um, to my backbone. And they were able to help me here. Uh, In a couple of days, I was at the hospital and I had surgery. And then I went to rehab for uh-huh. six weeks. And, you know, I was kind of in shock during that time. And of course you were. As I improved, they said, well, now you can get to go home. Uh-huh. And compute home. Well, that's El Joya. And I was so grateful that I could go back to my apartment. At, not like in some senior residences where you have to move to yeah. another area. I got back to my original apartment with lots of help. Oh, Care- that caregivers. So oh, this was assisted living. Uh-huh. Caregivers coming in very often. Uh, staff watched me closely. Uh-huh. And, um, my family came frequently. So with all, oh, therapists came. Very, I, three kinds of therapy coming right into my apartment. I did not have to leave. Fortunately, my insurance covered that. Yeah. And, during this long period of assisted living, I gradually got better, was able to get in and out of the bed by myself, et cetera. So then I got out of assisted and into independent living where I am mm-hmm. now. That was awesome. And so tell me about your apartment. What's it like? It's small. <laughs> it's a one bedroom with a den. I was mm-hmm. very specific about wanting the den, even though it's very small. I knew that I had a little love seat that opened up into a bed, a single bed, so that if I had one guest, they could stay in my apartment with me. Mm -hmm. That has happened a lot. I just had somebody last month and, you know, it's kind of a tight squeeze. You have to take the desk chair and put it in the kitchen when someone's sleeping there. That's okay. It works. The bathroom is lovely and the washer and dryer uh, are stacked in the bathroom. So Uh It has everything that you need and a complete kitchen, mm-hmm. full size appliances. Uh-huh. With that, not that you cook a lot, but now that I'm on independent living, I do like to fix some meals. Uh huh. And obviously, you have the freedom to do so, and all the amenities for yeah. like that you want to have. Obviously, so Peg, what's a typical day look like now for you being at living at El Joya? 
Well, for me, because I'm still recuperating, I have some self-massage routines and some exercise. Mm -hmm. A couple of days a week, I have a therapist, but I usually go to several activities and then go to the restaurant for the evening meal. Uh -huh. Today, there's an activity about um, sleeping, slumber, and how it works for you. Oh, wow. And, yeah. And another talk by a philosopher about sports in our lives. That's fascinating to me. There's, oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's talks on many, many different subjects. Last week, we had a speed friending event. It would take too long to explain how it works, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. And, and have you met, like, tell me about the connections you make with people that live in your community. Well, through the activities, the meals, and just living here, you get to know just about everybody, if not by name, by sight. Uh -huh. You have name tags, which is very helpful. Yes. Because if you're not sure of somebody's name, you just read their name tag. They wear it. Uh -huh. Then when somebody new comes, we make a special effort, invite them to dinner and so forth. So uh, I like the people part of it very much. It's not so big that you can't meet everyone mm -hmm. at yeah. some point or other. It's a good sign. You know, that's that's the really nice size. It's not too small where you feel like you won't meet somebody that could be a friend, but it's not so large that you feel like a number. And I think that's one of the nice things that um, the communities that that your or yet era living has, they're all just really nice size. They're not overwhelmingly large. Yeah. 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 So obviously you, you get up every day. Um, you've had assisted living, so there's caregiving, but you also get like house cleaning services. Tell oh, us a little bit yeah. about what that's like. Once a week, my day is Monday and you have a regular time. So I know I try and, and clear out of there, sort of straighten up so that they can clean. Yeah. And leave the apartment for an hour. Uh -huh. and that involves changing the linens, the, sh the towels, and very good job on bathrooms and kitchens. Mm -hmm. It's nice not to have to do that. And vacuuming and so forth. Wow. So that's nice. I don't do any cleaning. Yeah. And, you know, that's the, that's the nice. It's like life is really different. Now that you're in a senior living community like oh, that, can you imagine when you were in your home, all the things that you had to do before? I remember them. <laughs> <laughs> so how's that changed your life? Um, it leaves you more time and freedom to do some of the other things. I really want to work on me a memoir that I've had the material for and I haven't gotten to it. I said, well, oh. no reason why I can't do it now, except that I'm too busy going to the activities. Well, and see, that's what's important too. And so you've been there since 2020 with a little segue, but obviously, um, you know, it's your home now. Yeah, this is home and, and will be. Uh, that is lovely. Well, you know, I think it's so great because there's so many seniors out there that may think that I'm, you know, staying at home, I'm going to lose my freedom. And it sounds like just absolutely office, opposite there. In many cases, you have more freedom now. One feature that I enjoy is that they pick up my groceries for me. I order them online and the curbside pickup happens. Nice. But someone from here, it doesn't cost anything. I just do it once a week, but I've gotten into that routine. And see, that's great. That's great. And so you don't have to worry about, again, too, putting yourself in situations where you can still stay safer with still, mm -hmm. unfortunately, COVID's still somewhat with us at times. But there's all kinds of efforts, obviously, like that, that you don't have to go into those, um, you know, those areas if you don't want to. And, no, and, and I did not take my car when I moved here. I sold my car. Oh, so my the, goodness. The curbside groceries helps me. And then, of course, Amazon Prime. <laughs> yep. That's how we get everything. Well, and I love that too. So what advice would you give somebody that is looking into a retirement community? What, what well, type of... I think you have to decide what is important to you. If you're a people person, then you want to be in a place where you have an opportunity to meet people. Mm -hmm. And you have to decide if you want a large place. Some of them are like hotels to me. They're high rise, uh -huh. a smaller homier place. Mm -hmm. uh, and then location. The first one I looked at was about 25 miles away from the center of the city. And I thought, no, that's going to be too far. I want to enjoy the cultural and educational things that we have in Seattle. Mm -hmm. I want to be too out in the boonies. Yeah. So location would be important. 
And, and you're right by the light rail, which is really yeah. nice. The light rail is excellent. And then we're not far from the museums and theaters. They're a very short drive from here. Mm -hmm. So many of our uh, Aljoya trips are to the uh, ballet, the symphony, oh, whatever people want to sign up for. Uh huh. And obviously, um, you know, thinking about advice moving forward, uh, you're, you're in a small apartment. Um, it was, there's also apartments that are bigger, but it's interesting because I, I, I happen to know you probably don't spend that much time in your apartment except for, yeah. you know, rare situations. You're like out and about in the community, are you Most not? Most of the time, right. Things are going on. Yeah. Well, that's I, wonderful. You know, I take advantage of the little gym we have here too and work out on a machine. That's great. And then, of course, you work with physical therapists and things like that. So um, how does that work as you live there in the community? The ones that I have come to me uh -huh. and we have an appointment at a certain time and um, they they keep giving me goals or we keep setting goals. Yeah. To go over and we have to have another goal. You mm -hmm. mentioned light rail. It's close, but I haven't been on it yet. But that's one of my goals to get to ride on the light rail. Oh, yeah, yeah. And obviously, um, so if you're looking at retirement living, the nice thing about being, you know, where you are, you're at the light rail, you're close to the city, but you're not in the city. But there are communities um, that Air Living has in Bellevue, Renton, um, all different, you know, uh, different areas in um, Seattle. And yeah. so obviously you have the opportunity to choose any of those types of communities. It's the same culture. What have you found that is most valuable with the staff? With the staff? Mm -hmm. Well, a friend of mine came to one of our events and she noticed that the staff and the residents genuinely seem to like one another. And I think that's a big tribute. And, mm -hmm. and it's true. And it is really, I think, the, the the secret to our success. Well, Peg, thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your experience. Um, I always say that, you know, when you're in a good community like you are, it's a wonderful quality of life to live. And I am so glad I got to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Era Living is locally owned and operates eight premier retirement communities in Seattle, Renton, Mercer Island, Bellevue, and Issaquah. From vibrant, independent living to compassionate assisted living to secure memory care, Era Living respects and honors older adults by enhancing the quality of their lives. Learn more at eraliving.com.